In this video, I'm going to show you how I took this dimension drawing and accurately turned it into this 3D printed part using Blender. Here is the making of this part using Blender, the full video. Uh, the video is a warts and all. You'll see me uh, go one step forward, two steps back, uh, until I get the, the part that I'm looking for, or the design I'm looking for, out of Blender. Of that cylinder and 22.5 for the external. The gap cut out here is 5 millimeters, and each piece here is 13 millimeters. All right, let's go over to Blender, and I'll turn on my um, screencast keys. And you'll see on the bottom left here, if I press a key, it'll show up on the bottom left. And the bottom right down here, you'll see my elapsed time. So we'll go back to our drawing. The first thing I'm going to do is to create this cylinder here, which is going to be, I'll create, a, create that in two pieces. So the outside diameter or radius is 22.5 and 50 millimeters high. So let's create that first. I'm just just going to add a cylinder. What I'll do is I'll, the bottom left down here, I'll uh, increase the vertice count to 256. I want a nice smooth edge on that, uh, a nice smooth curve on that cylinder. And I think 256 will be fine. I'll press tab to create that. The next one I'm going to create, oops, start that again, I didn't do my radius. Shift A, cylinder, and 22.5, 22.5 millimeters, and it was 50 millimeters from memory. Check that, 50, 22.5. All right, so my next internal cylinder is going to be 12.5. Add another cylinder, and it's 12.5 millimeters, and I'll leave that at 50 for now. What I'll do is I'll scale that on the um, z-axis just a little bit, so it's pro protruding from the top of that shape. Okay, next cylinder I'm going to need is this one down here, which has uh, an internal radius of 7.5, external 17.5. Another cylinder, 17.5 millimeters, and it's 20 millimeters high. All right, now, I'm going to shift that. That is 75 millimeters across from this central point here. So if we look from the top down, uh, it's 75 millimeters in this direction is the external for this curve. So I'm going to press G to move it, lock it to the Y axis, and I'll move it 75 millimeters. So it's 0.075. So I've just moved that 75 millimeters in that direction. And this cylinder here, actually we'll do the internal for this one. We'll create a new uh, cylinder. And it's going to be 7.5. And I'll just make that one three centimeters for now and GY.075 so it's now do it again GY.075 it's now in its correct location and the cylinder at the back here which has a diameter of 16 millimeters I wonder why it's diameter and not radius Or is that center? Center, 16 millimeters. So what's the radius of this one? 
Where's the diameter? Hmm. That symbol there. 16. Can't be 16. Oh, it can't be 16. No, it's okay. So it'll be diameter of 16, radius of 15. We'll try that. So cylinder. And it was a radius of 15. And the width of that is what? Okay, 13, 13, 26, 31. So 31 millimeters across here. Okay, 31 millimeters. All right, so that's the outside curve. And it's 35 millimeters in this direction. So it's GY minus 0.035. Enter. Okay, we'll rotate that in a minute. And we'll do uh, an internal uh, cylinder here. I'll make the radius 8 millimeters. Do another cylinder. Radius 8 millimeters. And we'll make it uh, 35 millimeters, just so it's longer than the other one. GY minus 0.035, enter. And that looks right in relation to those. So now these two need to be re rotated on the Y axis. So it's going to go R, Y, 90. So they're in the right location, but they've uh, just been rotated. And I really would like to know if this is flush with the base. I'm going to assume this is flush with this, this piece here. I can't see any measurements to tell me what this distance is here. So I'm going to work on the fact that this is flush with the base, which we will be able to work out. That's 50 millimeters, so I've got to drop that down. Um, switch to my side view. If I drop that down 25 millimeters, is that going to work? G Z 0.025 minus no. So I'm going to have to go. Where is it? So it's 30 millimeters. 15. GZ minus 0.015. No. Let me see what that's putting at. One centimeter. One centimetre, okay. Ten millimetres, all right. So that also needs to be minus ten millimetres, which puts it flush with the base. This here is twenty millimetres, and it's got to be on the base here on the floor. So I'm going to give myself a point of reference and going to snap the cursor to that base and I'm going to set its origin to the 3D cursor. I'm going to join those parts together. And make the origin at the 3D cursor. I'll set the base to zero. So that's okay. 
I can do the same to this one. Cursor to selected. And I'll set the origin to 3D cursor. And I'll mo also make that zero. So everything's set on the ground there now. It's looking good. So what I might do now is just remove these pieces. I'm going to apply the scale for this, this piece and then check the scale, that's fine. I'm going to do a Boolean operation difference carve and remove this piece. That's fine. I can delete that now. I'm going to do another Boolean operation. Before I do that, I'm going to separate these parts. So these are all individual pieces again. Check the scale on those, they're fine. Boolean, difference, carve, remove that piece out of there, apply that. So that's got those two shapes. And the reason why I have a center core um, separate is that I can I can ensure that that is dimensionally accurate so I know that those the internal radius of that is exactly what I'm looking for and looking at that that's looking fine now this piece here will do the same scales fine scales fine Remove that, apply, I can delete that now. So there's my basic sh piece taking shape. Now I need to uh, bring this, I'll extend this piece here now so it uh, merges in with this. This is and what I'm going to do is to got to keep that core there. Don't need those. Don't need those. There we go. And actually, thinking about it now, I should have probably did this. Before, yeah, that's fine. I before I subtracted that that center core out of it. Select those. Select those. Extrude them out. So I've got a piece there, and now I can fill that. And select those, fill that, select those, fill that. Now I'm going to just put a, a cut straight down the middle of that. Delete those vertices because I'll do one side and then just mirror it over. 
that piece can go. No, it can't. It's not going to let me delete that. Why is that? Uh -huh. It's a problem there. I'll switch to edges. Have that selection. Grab those. Fill that. And grab that. And I'll fill that. Can remove that now. Can remove that. Now, while I'm here, I'm just going to um, check for doubled vertices. We've got three, zero. So that's good, that's clean. And I'm going to add a modifier. Mirror that gets us back to our original shape. Going to select this curve here, extrude it, turn on clipping, extrude it on the x axis, it joins up there. So now we have that. That piece here. I'll cut this slot out last once I've merged those together. Now this piece here we have these two pieces So what I'll do there is create another cube and just make sure the cursor is to the center of this object and um, selection the cursor so that's now central to this. This cube is two centimeters, so I need to move it one centimeter. GY.01. Now that's central to there. Scale on the x axis, scale on the z. I'm going to apply it at scale. Select that object, make sure it scales at 1, add a boolean modifier, difference, carve, and we'll apply that. So now I have that shape. And what we can do is grab those faces. And they've got to be 15 millimeters. So if we extrude them on the y axis by 15 millimeters, that will give us that shape. So now we have that, which should mean that that is 10 millimeters. Looking at the grid, that looks right. So we've got that part. Now we do have to extend a piece out from here which is 10 millimeters. So what I'm going to do is I know this is 50 millimeters. So if I create a cut through the center and drop that line down 50 25, 20 millimeters. We should get to our mark. So that's directly in the center. I'm going to move that down 
20 millimeters. And then I'll do another one. Mm, we'll be the center. Okay, so I'll create another cut. Now this is in the center of this section here, which is going to be 45 millimeters. So what I'll do is I'll just move that down. Do that again. Move that down until it hits there. And then we'll come up 10 millimeters. Okay, so we've got that section there. Now that's interesting, that must taper. This piece here must taper to meet this section here. So what I'll do is switch to faces mode. I'll grab all those faces and I'll remove from the selection all those which will give me the correct shape is that going to blend in yep that's what I want yeah I'm going to extrude that on the y-axis Switch to vertices and make that zero. And to make sure it's flush with this, I'm going to turn on snapping, vertices, vertex, and closest, GY, snap to that. So now that is, has snapped to that. I can delete all this geometry through here. So I'm going to go to edge mode, making sure nothing's selected. Grab all those. X. This is not entirely necessary, I just like to work with a clean mesh. Control X. And I'll do the same here. Okay, so now I have that shape. That's how it's looking. And we need to snap these two edges to here. So tapers in. Switch to top view. Back to vertices. And while vertex snap is still on, snap that to there. To there. Okay, so that's one. Now I need to cut this piece out of here, which I can do by selecting this piece and grab. Switch to face mode, grab all those. Just going to isolate that part. I only need the center, so I'll get rid of all these. I'm going to duplicate that. 
make its own part, scale that on the z-axis. Oops, we've still got snapping on. And this will be my tool for cutting out of the other part. And I'll focus on that. Select my vertices. We'll fill that. We'll fill that. And we'll fill that. Going to make sure that my normals are all facing in the correct direction. Going to apply my rotation and scale. So now I have a tool for cutting out of this piece of geometry. I'll just make sure that's all okay. Boolean difference carve. Get rid of that. Apply that and delete that tool now. So now I have that that piece done there. That's been cut out. So I now have to merge those two together and these two together. And I've also got to create a piece in here which I'll do last. Okay, or will I do it? No, I'll do that now actually. So I'm going to, I know that needs to be 10 millimeters wide. Actually, I'll do a save before something goes wrong. Um, okay, we'll call this um, um, dimensioned part. And we'll give it its own folder. Dimension part can go into there. Would have been uh, terrible if I'd lost that after doing 26 minutes worth of work. Okay, now I'm going to put my cursor back to center. I'm going to add a cube, and the cube's going to be. 10 millimeters. And there's a few ways I can merge this in. And that just goes flush with that path there. Just going to grab that base, turn on my snapping, and snap it. To those vertices, it's the top there, and this edge here. I'm going to snap to those vertices. I'll do that on the y axis, gy. Uh, no, I'm going to lock out, lock out x. So. G, shift X to lock that out and snap it. So that's fine there. And this one will make that a little more accurate. G, lock out X. That's there. And then grab this edge. Do it again. G shift X. And I can just pop down there for the time being. So now we have that piece there. So let's look on our right. What I will do is just tidy this up a little bit. Is grab 
this edge and we'll snap that to this point up here ah, wrong edge GY so that should be fine and then this edge here do the same again so that's flush with that grab that base extrude that so it's going to blend into there and it needs to actually come forward a bit so we'll blend that in that way and this piece here will have just slightly intersect with that That piece. All right. I think that's looking good. Now to join them all together. Just going to grab the geometry in there. a copy of that. Actually no I'm not going to, I'm going to do something different. What was the interior radius was 12.5 so we'll create a new tool. Cylinder and we'll go 60 millimeters center. Going to use this tool to cut out of this geometry here because we've got a face going through there or maybe I just need to delete those faces all together I feel yeah that was a problem no still doing it why am I getting a face in here Let's try doing a split straight down the center. Join that. Let's fix that. Okay, we just need to add some geometry in there. Grab that one. Grab that one join that and let's fix that okay so that piece I created we don't need it's all fine now okay 
So I can apply the modifier to this one. Just going to check that for doubles. It had 516 doubled vertices in that, so I've cleaned that up. Check this one. Two vertices got removed from there. Check this one. Four vertices. So um, just while I'm here, if you want to see why I'm remo removing doubles and how I set up my um, my Blender scene so I can work at these resolutions, um, I'll put a link to a video I made um, just recently about mastering Boolean modifiers where I go into uh, how to correctly use Boolean modifiers in Blender and also how to uh, ensure you don't get errors in your mesh. Uh, so I'd, rather than explain it here, I'd highly suggest that you watch that video um, if you want to learn why I'm doing what I'm doing. Uh, okay, back to our mesh. So we have to We have to merge this shape here whilst still having a flat edge here. So then there's that this here must be curved. This piece has to be curved for this to work. Because it's not flat across here. So you're going to have a curve going this way. And a curve going that way, that's a tricky piece of uh, geometry there. So knowing that, I'm going to add a heap of geometry on here, because this has to become a curve. has to become a curve. Hmm. Okay. Just going to get rid of get rid of this. I was going to clean up that geometry, but it's taking too much time, so I will leave it. It's not going to greatly affect anything. Now, if I Let's curve into that. So that cuts into that. Cuts into that. So what I'm thinking I might have to do is do something like that. something like this. Or if I do this, 
from this and bring that up. That'll work. So I do that. That's what I'll do. I'll cut in that way. Just making sure I'm applying a scale to that. And then I cut that and then just make those flush. I think that will work. Okay, so that add a modifier, boolean, going to union those two together. So that's unioned. I don't really need that geometry there. That's okay, I'll fix that. Let's apply, actually before I do, what I often like to do is just make, I'm not sure what's going to happen once I apply things, I'll just make a duplicate and move that to another layer. So I've got that as a backup. Do a save. Okay, so let's apply that. I'll supply that to that. Fine, which means yeah, we don't need this one. I'll delete that. Now, if I bring my vertices up to here, that should be what I'm looking for. Turn on snapping. First, I'm going to flatten that. Scale of zero, and snap them to there. Okay, let's give me that shape. That's what I was after. And I'll do the same here. Yeah, is that? Hmm, that hasn't worked. Ah, I know why. I haven't. I need to merge these, these two pieces together first. Okay, and this is why it's good just to make a backup coffee copy. So I'm going to move that one to here. So now I won't. I'll move that to layer three. Go to layer two. And snap that back to zero. All right. I'll just copy that and I'll move that to layer one. That's back to zero, back to zero, back to zero, back to zero. Yeah, right. I'll put them all together. Just join them all. That's better. They're all back to their right locations. And We can split them back out again. So we've got separate parts now. So it's that part, that part, and that part. Okay, I know. Okay, so now I need to join these two together first before I add the other part union carve there apply that that's all one 
piece and remove that tool. Just going to check for doubles. Yep, cleaned up 162 vertices. So that's that. Now, now if I merge these two parts in, I actually don't need these, do I? Let's get rid of this. This way below. Right. Don't really need that either. Okay. Start with a cleaner piece of geometry. And we can boolean those together. Union, carve. So that's better. It's all one piece. Apply that. Delete that. Now I can go back to here. Button those out. Flatten those out. Snap those. Snap those. Okay, and there we have that piece. So we've got a slight curve this way and a, uh, an exterior curve that way. But that's exactly as per drawing. The last, well, the second last thing we need to do is to merge these two pieces together. Just going to make sure that that's intersecting nicely, which it is. Make sure we haven't got any vertices, just cleaned up 42. Scale on that's right, scale on that's one. Right, that's clean. So let's actually let's remove. Don't need that in there anymore. And we don't need that in there. So we'll join those two pieces together. Boolean, union, carve. Grab that. Yay, 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 yay. Why did it do that? Intersect. Difference. Mm -hmm. Okay. Something's going on. Okay. Rotation scale. Oh, it may have been rotation. Let's try that again. Why are you being bad? B mesh will let me do it. It gives me some geometry inside. It's going to give me non-manifold faces, which I don't want. Carve is normally what I use. Why is that causing me issues? Let's see if it's this edge down the bottom here. I'm just picking that back up off zero. Alright, I think that's that was the culprit. 
So I can set, set that back to zero once it's um, once it's finished its operation, and that looks better. We've got no no non-manifold faces, so that's looking clean. So I can apply that and go to vertices. Look at those. Remove doubles. Let's clean it up. Now we need to come back down here and fix these vertices that are not at zero. It should be that one. Zero. Turn on snapping. Let's just clean that up. So there we have it. Oh, what's happened here? I've lost a bit of geometry here. It's not a problem. Try and do try that. Okay, let's cut that out of there. Cut that out of there. Grid fill. It's not. Thought there might be an easy way to just quickly patch that. Um, but what we'll do is I'll just turn off snapping, scale them back to zero, which will close up face up, and. I remove doubles. It's not going to remove those, so we'll do it this way. There's that. There is that geometry there. extra face. This is what you've got to do is you've got to make sure you get your mesh nice and clean. And I don't know where Seems to be alright there. I've got that. Got something happening here. Okay. Ah, I see what it is. I haven't cleaned up my tool, the looks. Yeah. I just didn't delete the tool that I'd used to uh, do the Boolean operation prior. 
All right, so that looks like we've got our part exactly. Oh, we've got to cut out five millimeters. Just a straight cut through. I'm, I'm assuming all the way through. So we'll knock that in. Add a cube. It's X is going to be five millimeters. And scale on Y. Scale on Z. So it's just going to cut straight through there. I'll apply its rotation and scale. Add a modifier. Difference. Curve. That has worked. Apply that. Delete that. Now we're done. Okay, so the next step is to um, to print it. Just going to check for doubles. Three double vertices, just out of curiosity. Yeah, it's too complex. I was wondering what happened if I threw a bevel modifier onto it, how it would look. But I think that's it. 3545 says 35, that's got to be right. All our dimensions should be right. And yeah, so the next step is to output it to an STL file, which I'll do. I'm going to print this in Cura 1604. I'll, I'll slice it, sorry, I'll slice it out of Cura 1604. So I know the scale for that is one. Uh, dimension part STL. Export that. Let's load Cura 1604. We'll load that part. And here it is. Let's give it a 0.16 layer height. Yeah. 